Hello everyone, this is Demon Phoenix and I am back with a Death March walkthrough, an updated version of my Death March guide, and this is aimed at the most efficient and effective way to get through Death March playing The Witcher 3 in 2023 after patch 4.0. So this is an extremely important episode because it focuses on how to start the game and the game is most difficult on Death March early on. So it's very important to start off on the right foot and all of this is on Death March and is geared towards how you would do the game on that hardest difficulty setting. So first of all, make sure that you're using your tutorials. If you're unfamiliar with the game, it shows you things like how to cast signs, which are essentially your spells, and that the stamina bar at the top left, the yellow bar, is used for casting signs. You do start off with a Tony Owl potion, three charges of that, so I would take that from your inventory, put it in one of the quick slots, and use that for this first fight. Lots of dodging with the B or circle button, and basically that doesn't use your, doesn't stop your stamina from recovering like rolling does. Uh, you can roll which goes further but stops your stamina from recovering. So you want to be dodging and using the Quen sign which is the uh, shield that will protect you from one hit. Just keep out of the way of taking any damage and then using the Igni sign to set them on fire if possible. So following that assuming you got through that fight just by keeping Quinn up you ride Roach and you get to this uh, you ride through this ransacked village but uh, you can either hop off and just grab the stuff in this village first or you can just follow Vesemir as he rode past there on the horse and come back here later it's this area on the map you will ride past it and get that ransacked village signpost that you can come back to for reference but the reason to make sure that you loot all this area is you get some very good things like the meteorite silver ingot there and you can learn about destroying objects namely doors for getting into places and the reason it's very important to loot these areas is you'll often get things like a silver ingot and you need those for upgrading your swords later on looting things is very important as long as you can find the items that you need you will be able to find everything in White Orchard for what I'm going to recommend without having to spend excess money so that's very useful and important to get used to. After you ride a little bit further you ride into town again normally you just ride this way with Vesemir but I would recommend either doing this now or immediately coming back after following Vesemir to the first inn because there's this house this area on the map that we just showed and looting these items here or other items around will often get you wire which is one of the items that we just picked up there which is crucial for in upgrading your armor and you also are guaranteed to get a dimeritium ingot from that chest at the back of the house there are just little outposts with some guards and things you should be able to loot those without uh, without it upsetting them or triggering them to attack you and again this is a place where you can find things like wire and that is necessary for upgrading the starting armor as mentioned so when you get to the first inn you will speak to this woman elsa and if you're wanting to play gwent which is the really cool card game in the witcher 3 you can pay money to buy those gwent cards and add them to your deck i would recommend buying those if you want to be playing gwent you can also sell some of the hides and junk items so you can get some of that money back you speak to one of the gentlemen in the inn and he will tell you about Gwent and you can play the first game against him. It's not overly difficult, it gives you a tutorial if you wish to teach you the game and once you've won that you will get the Miraculous Guide to Gwent and you also get the Zoltan Shivi card which is a decent card to add to your deck. You then speak to this gentleman uh, who will you know no doubt be important later. Uh, I would say have fine have a drink because it gives you a Nilfgaardian lemon which you can use to meditate as we'll cover in just a little bit. Next order of business is to find these chickens and these houses. You can knock out the chickens with your ard sign and loot the houses and you'll get things like eggs and items that can heal you up outside of battle. Then we go to the notice board and then once you've gone to the notice board you can change your map. So you've got the bottom left there, you put it on all and the one that I've just added a marker on at the bottom left, there are two question marks at the bottom left. This is the one that we want to focus on so put a marker on that because that is where we get an unguarded place of power and we will come to that because those give you ability points. Next order of business is to just speak to this dwarf and you get the quest twisted fire starter you follow it it's very straightforward you don't have any combat in it or anything like that and afterwards you will be able to speak to the dwarf and he is an armorer so he will be able to upgrade your starting armor so you start off with the Kermorin armor which is a medium piece of medium armor piece of gear and you can upgrade it to the warrior's leather jacket so you need the starting armor two pieces of wire which is why we made sure to loot those a cured leather and some scraps and so basically you go to the dismantle 
option for the blacksmith and you should have picked up some of these hides from looting and you can dismantle one of those to get a cured leather and some to get the scraps so you see there now we have the ability because we've got those items we've not had to buy them it's cheaper to dismantle things and get those components and then you should be able to upgrade upgrade your armor straight away the increased armor value is useful but the resistances are considerably better and resistances matter a lot more on deathmatch after we've got that, make sure that you come to this place of power, which is the thing that we marked on the map, the uh, one in the bottom left corner of the map, uh, not the very bottom left corner as that one's a bandit camp, but the one that we marked earlier in the video. And this is a place of power and these grant you an ability point. And this one is completely unguarded. Just make sure that we go to this one first get the ability point and whilst previously we always said that gourmet was extremely overpowered which is an ability that made your food last longer food is just kind of useful for uh, healing outside of combat but it's not as powerful as it used to be with gourmet so what we want is griffin school techniques all four of the pieces of gear that you start with are medium armor so the witcher 3 has light medium and heavy armor and you have corresponding of techniques abilities of these three in the general school and we want to get the griffin school techniques now what this does is it gives you five percent sign intensity boost for each piece of medium armor you're wearing and whilst it says it's a five percent stamina regeneration boost what it actually means is it's five stamina per second per piece of medium gear. So because we have four pieces of medium armor, as you can see here, that gives you 20% extra sign intensity, which is good because it gives you a better chance of knocking things over with Ard or particularly burning things with Igni early on. And burning's very powerful. And it also gives you uh, 30 stamina regeneration per second which is considerably higher. Just make sure when you go to get that place of power, you don't stumble across the griffin nest that is near it. Uh, if you do, just reload an autosave because that loses you the ability to do some of the main quest and you lose out on quite a bit of experience. Um, so just be careful with that. And we also wanna make sure we don't go in the river and don't get any buckthorn herb yet. Then we want to go and speak to Odalan, which is from the quest contract Devil by the Well, which you'll have picked up from the notice board. And you come to this area, Devil by the Well, and you can loot all of the surrounding houses and a few other things like this. There are a couple of little, um, you know, bags, and I just got another silver ingot there. And you need two silver ingots for the sword upgrades. And you get bear fat and dog tallow without having to fight any wild dogs, wolves, or bears. And this is very useful because you can cr craft the necrophage oil using dog tallow and blowball which are plants you can just pick up and also arenaria which is a plant uh, that you pick up in one of the fields near Odaland's house and you can use the bear fat to craft the spectre oil with that. Now I want you to look at this place on the uh, markers because before we go and do any of the main quest uh, we want to go and get drowner brain which is from killing you guessed it a drowner. Now these drowners are level three, so it's not the end of the world. They're not like massively out leveling you. If you come to that area we just marked on the map, you'll be able to fight these ones with these red barrels. So if you can sort of trick them or draw them into being close to the barrels, set the barrels on fire with Igni, as you can see, you can do a ton of damage, should be able to beat these things fairly easily. So after you kill the drowners, there are normally three or four in this uh, little undiscovered location and once you have beaten those, one of them should hopefully drop you a Drowner Brain. Now, the yellow plants, there are two yellow plants that you can just pick up all over the place in White Orchard, and they are Celandine and Blowball, and you need five Celandine and one Drowner Brain to be able to make the Swallow Potion, which is the main form of healing that we're gonna be using right throughout the game. So getting Swallow is extremely important. So there, we should have looted a Dwarven Spirit, pick up five celandine and get that drowner brain and then you can make swallow. So add swallow to one of your quick slots and that is the main way of healing throughout the game and it's extremely useful. Uh, you also get hard alcohol which is things like alcohest and dwarven spirit, Nilfgaardian lemon, Tamarian rye and what they mean is that when you meditate you get all of your potions back just for the cost of that one hard alcohol. We then go and speak to the Nilfgaardian captain and you get 
the quests and then you can come and speak to Tomira the herbalist now because we have swallow we'll be able to speak to her about griffin you choose the option did the griffin do that and you get to speak to her about uh, lena who is injured and with swallow you will complete the on death's bed quest and you will get some additional items from Tomira, and then she will also tell you about the main quest where we need to get buckthorn now one of the things that you can also do is buy items from Tomira. Now we want to try and avoid buying everything as much as possible, but if she has bison grass, and indeed if any herbalist has bison grass, strongly recommend buying a couple of those. And that is because they are used for making beast oils later on. That's one of the ones that you're gonna be using an oil for a great deal. And it doesn't grow anywhere, you don't pick it up. So make sure that you buy bison grass. She also has saltpeter, which is used to make your bombs, but you usually get one of those from that little hamlet, the area with the devil in the well items. So you don't have to buy those from her really. Um, and the other thing you can do is you can find honeycombs all around White Orchard on the trees. You burn them with Igni and she gives the best price for honeycomb. So if you pick up a load of honeycomb, burn them when they're on the trees, then collect them and you can sell them to Tomira whenever is convenient or come back before you leave White Orchard and sell all of them to her. She gives the best prices for those. So after she's told us about collecting buckthorn, uh, then we do want to be going and collecting it. So go to the river, swim the length of the river and make sure that you not only pick up buckthorn, but you get all of these chests. There are, I think, four in total in the river. Make sure you don't run out of breath, but make sure that using your witcher senses, the chests show up as yellow and uh, make sure that you collect those and get the alchemy recipes within. Then we've got another place of power, which you can see uh, the marker, the black marker at the bottom of the map, and just killed a bear and got another place of power there. But this one is very important. So this little ring-like structure with the bridge in it, uh, the building in it, beg your pardon, is the next port of call because this is how we will get not only another place of power, but the diagram for upgrading our swords. There's a lot of celandine here, so if you didn't get the five to make swallow, you can pick those up first. And the place of power is guarded by this wraith. So even though the wraith is a higher level than you, you can just put Erden down, uh, dodge out of the way, and you can see, even if it hits you, it's not the end of the world. So uh, you can survive a couple of hits whilst you get used to fighting them. Just keep going between Erden and Quen. You only have to take out half of its health before you'll be able to get that place of power. Then we break down the door to the church and in we go to finish it off. So as you can see there, even though this is Death March and it's a couple of levels higher, it's not very difficult to fight and it's not gonna kill you in one hit anyway. And you've got that Swallow Potion if needed. Quick note here about the replenishing items. Make sure you read that if you're unfamiliar with the mechanic. And what that is, is what I was saying about hard alcohol. If you have Alkahest or Temerian Rye, or more usually Dwarven Spirit, uh, either of those, uh, you will meditate and get all of your potions back at the cost of just one of those hard alcohol. So that's why potions are extremely useful. Then we collect the Serpentine Sword Diagram, and that is what we'll need to update, upgrade our Silver Sword, and it also gives you this other part, and you can follow the quest on your map to this area. You come up the slope there, and then jump up, and you've got a few level two bandits to fight, which are fairly easy. So you fight these deserters and then there is a level five, uh, their sort of leader is level five. So just be a little more careful with him. That's the deserter leader. Close the gap on the archer and kill him first. And then you can fight the leader one-on-one. -on -one. So again, you want to try and burn him with Igni maybe, but uh, you can also use Tawny Owl to improve your stamina regeneration to make this easier. And when you're fighting a single human opponent, a very effective tactic is to use Axie to stun them and then get a hit in and then rinse and repeat. So you get the Serpentine Silver Sword diagram from this area and now we have the two diagrams to be able to upgrade our swords. Now what you need to do that is you need two silver ingots for the silver sword and you need an emerald dust for each sword as well. Now you can sometimes get the emerald dust, you may have got them for uh, killing the Wraith at the Devil in the Well contract and this area down here as you can see just to the uh, bottom underneath that marker there was the bridge and if you go to the bridge there is a smuggler's cache and you can collect all of these things again undefended you will sometimes depending on what you've got randomized in your game uh, you may get emerald dust there and then to the top left area uh, one of those four undiscovered locations the question marks on the map uh, one of them is this bandit camp in the wood and so you can kill the deserters here and you may get emerald dust from one of these things as well. So assuming that you've been able to get emerald dust somewhere, 
you can just use one of each of those for the swords so you come back up to the Nilfgaard camp and then you talk to this gentleman who is the quartermaster and he will be able to craft those viper swords for you so they are much stronger than your normal swords and they also have a chance to poison enemies so the silver one increases your ard sign intensity and also gives a 10% chance to poison and a little bit of bonus experience from monsters and the steel sword has a chance to poison uh, with the steel sword enemies so that is like things like dogs and human enemies and stuff like that so those are very strong swords and that's why we prioritize those next so at this point we should have the both swords upgraded and have upgraded the armor as well and you at some point you'll hit level two so that you can put a mutagen in the slot which will uh, you know slightly increase your vitality but more importantly you can also get another ability and put that in the second ability slot so then you follow the other part of the main quest you speak to Mislav and you follow him to the griffin quest and then you uh, will find the griffin nest rather and be able to search all of this stuff and that completes the next part of the quest and triggers talking to Vesemir so collect everything from the nest and you'll probably hit level two or three from getting that experience. You get a large amount of experience from the main quests. As discussed, as soon as you hit level two, you can put the Noon Wraith Mutagen you got from beating the Devil in the Well contract uh, Wraith and put that to get a bit of extra vitality. And then I would recommend that you either get Muscle Memory if you want to go all out attack, uh, or if you're following along with what I'm going to be doing, I'll be sticking to the Alchemy Tree and you put three points in the Poison Blades ability and then put that there. So, uh, assuming that we're doing this the same way that I am, we've not yet fought the Devil in the Well, and so now you can go back and finish off that quest. And so again, fighting a Wraith, you want to do the same thing as the other one you fought, you just use Erden, and uh, that will make her corporeal instead of ephemeral if you want to say it that way and make her actually solid so you can get good hits in when you've dealt about half her health half her health she will disappear and create these three little specters and they drain your health as you can see there so you don't have to hit them they have no health effectively so you can just hit them with an ard sign from distance before they start draining your health you shouldn't lose too much health and that will uh, cause her to come back get another urgent trap down and get those solid hits in can use either fast attacks or you can get a strong hit in there with a triangle or Y button on Xbox and that should let you finish her off pretty quickly and as mentioned you get a new noon wraith mutagen and you may indeed get an emerald dust if you didn't get one yet to be able to craft whichever of the swords the silver or the steel one that you're missing now after you've completed that you can go back and speak to Tomira again and she will give you a couple of extra items including saltpeter and a couple of the rarer herbs so make sure you do that because saltpeter is what you can use to make a salmon bomb which is a bomb that will stun enemies but you can also use that to clear out the other undiscovered locations and that will blow up monster nests for you. So after we've got the swords, the upgrade, and we have created the Thunderbolt uh, potion, which increases your attack damage. After speaking with Vesemir, we've got to finish the Royal Griffin and actually fight that. So you get the crossbow, game teaches you how to use that. You can knock the griffin out of the air using either the crossbow or Ard or uh, the Axie sign. And what you want to do is try and burn it like Vesemir just did there. And with the Griffin School techniques and our higher sign intensity and using Tawny Owl to recover your stamina, this shouldn't be too bad. You can stay out of range of its attacks most of the time, try and keep Quen up and then try and burn it with Igni which is very useful, burning inflicts damage over time and once you've ripped off half its health it will fly away. You simply follow the griffin and then you will fight it at this uh, other area. You again can use the crossbow either aiming manually or just using a quick tap of the right bumper or R1 to be able to shoot the griffin out of the air or again use R or Axi when it's close enough and then get in your hits, trigger fire damage if you can with Igni and that will take it out pretty easily. So once you've done that, that is pretty much everything done in White Orchard. So what you need to do is come back and speak to the captain when we've done that. You can choose to either take the coin if you want more coin or you can turn down the coin and get a bit of extra experience. Money's pretty easy to come by I feel so I usually just turn it down. And then you want to have a quick check of your map and make sure that you clear out everything else in White Orchard. So there are six places of power in total which I will just quickly go through now. So one, two, three, four, five and that's the first one that we actually got early on. 
and then there are monster nests and if you made the salmon bomb you can destroy those as well and also in the very top left of the map there's a place that's not listed it's a little tent and you can pick up a diagram in a chest there so make sure you don't miss that and then go and finish off all the other undiscovered locations before speaking to Yen. so i hope you found that useful please do like comment and subscribe and i will be following up with more episodes on the path